Good evening, YouTube family. How's everybody doing on this Monday evening? Hopefully everybody is wonderfully blessed, chilling, being safe, hanging with the loved ones. Hopefully everybody had a green day in the markets, being that the markets were kind of up and down, guys. You know what I mean? Well, hopefully, nonetheless, you guys had a great day in the markets. This is Crypto in Stock Talk with Jaime G. That'd be me for those of you that don't know. I'm the guy that brings you the latest in the crypto and in the stock world. And hopefully, in hopes that our accounts will go up in them dollar signs and hopefully sooner than later guys guys i'm not going to be too long just long enough we're just going to dive right into it right now we're going to be talking about a company that is in the shipping sector guys particularly in uh dry uh dry goods and in the container crane uh good sector guys right they do container uh, shipping containers and dry bulk all right navos maritime who are they what do they do we're going to get into that right now it says Naval's Maritime Partners LP operates as a shipping and logistics company which engages in owning and operating dry cargo and container vessels. Guys, so they do two two major things, guys. Dry cargo and containers, you know, container cranes. It focuses on transporting and transshipment of dry bulk commodities, including iron ore, coil, and grain. The company was founded on August uh, 7th, 2007 and its headquarters in Monte Carlo. Guys, I'm going to be reading an article out of Seeking Alpha for you guys right now here in a second. I'm going to get a little bit into what uh, Wall Street is uh, predicting its price and some levels of resistance and support, guys. If all that sounds good to you guys, do me a favor and destroy that like button. And if you guys can show me some love and maybe hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I come through with the latest and greatest, guys. It helps me out with the YouTube algo and... It is free of charge. It costs you nothing but merely two, three seconds to hit that like and comment and to subscribe to the channel. Okay, guys. So, Naval's Maritime was up 6.26% today, guys. During the day, it fluctuated 12.4% from the day low of 25.20 to the day high of 28.33. Then it pulled back slightly to $27.97, where it closed out the day at. Navos has a market cap of $69.5 million. In the last week, they're up 20%. The last month, 19%. Last three months, 112%. In the past year, up 366%. Wall Street gives it a strong buy and a price target of $59.69, which would be a 83.4 increase, guys. That's not too bad. Not too bad. And th this company is totally underestimated, guys. Uh, not just that, just the shipping sector in all, in general, guys. I mean, when you hear about shipping sector, that doesn't sound like a sexy stock, right? Like, like Apple or Tesla or, or CCIV, right? Or Neo. Those are all the like sexy stocks as you will, as, as I like to say, right? But all these stocks here, right? Are ones that fly under the radar yet. These ones will bring you uh, major gains. You know what I mean, guys? So don't sleep on uh, Navos, man. That's why I'm bringing it to you, putting it on your radar and giving you a little bit of of uh, uh analysis on it here guys and you know always do your own research um don't take uh what i say or any og youtuber that's been out there uh, as they always say you know always do your own research guys you know what i mean we we do take our times and do our own research to bring these videos and share with you guys but nonetheless none of it's financial advice it's just us and it's just me sharing my thoughts and opinions guys but the point i'm making is always do your own research you know what i'm saying so the first level resistance, guys, is at $28.37. And that second level resistance is $29.11. And that third level is at $30.30. And the first level of support is at $25.98. Like I said, guys, right now, oh, it's actually sitting at $28, right, guys? So it's it's sitting uh 37 cents shy of uh hitting that um first level resistance, right? Where it might be a little bit of a challenge to break through, or it might just it might just uh, blast right through it. You know what I mean, guys? Uh, pending on... Pending. Sorry. Uh, being that this sector is in high demand right now, I, I foresee it going up a lot faster than what people um, think. I think it'll hit $59 a lot sooner than than a year right and guys when 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 they give wall street analysts give a price target such as the 59 dollars and 69 cents 
right? That's within in 12 months, right? Within a year, right? That doesn't mean that it's going to shoot up to $59 here in the next month or two. You know, I just want to clarify that, right? It's it's a price target, right? And what they see based on the fundamentals and the technical analysis that they carry out on, on these stocks, right? But the reason why, I, like I said, I chose this stock and putting this one on our radar, guys, is because of it's it's undervalued and the shipping sector is is a hot sector right now a lot of people just don't know okay like i said the uh, first level support is $25.98 that second level is 25.24 if it continues to dipity dip well that third level of support is at $24.04 they actually also pay a dividend guys of 5.3 uh, percent you know what i mean which isn't too bad because a lot of other ones such as like johnson and johnson they pay like Two percent, you know, Apple, which is a cheap skate too. They pay uh, less than this company does, right, guys? But five point three percent is not too bad of a dividend. Um, retail investors own sixty six point eight percent of the company. Institution investors own twenty six point nine, and individual insiders own five point two percent of the company. You got. BlackRock, Morgan Stanley, Merrill Lynch, Wells Fargo, all these major institutions own shares of uh, Naval's maritime guys. They obviously see uh, profit, guys, in the in the near and foreseeable future. Like I always say, guys, they are not going to invest in companies that they don't see profit in, right? Because that's the bottom line of investing is profit, profit, profit. You know what I mean? So they want to make their clients profit. And because once they make their clients profit, then they make uh, profits for themselves as well, right? So it's a win-win situation. Uh, I say all that to say this, guys, is that when you have institutional investors such as BlackRock investing in these companies, it's to me, that's a major, major plus sign. You know what I mean? Uh, dollar signs, rather, is what I like to say, right? Because they, they, they know, not they know, nobody knows, but they obviously have a... Strong conviction in this company, and that's why they invest millions of dollars. Okay, with that being said, guys, I'm gonna read. A, I'm gonna close out with reading an article. I don't want to take too long, just long enough, guys. And uh, okay, here we go. It's out of Seeking Alpha. It says here. Uh, this is just a summary. I'm gonna get out of that here. It says, "This is my third article on the evolution of Naval's Maritime Partners since the merger deal with Naval's Containers." was announced in November, although the merger has now been completed as of March 31st without issue and the shares have appreciated meaningfully as forecasted, NMM re, uh, remains highly undervalued and highly discounted to its peers on the incredible strength in what is now decade-high rates in both the container and dry bulk segments. Did you just hear that, guys? I'm going to repeat that. It says, NMM remains highly undervalued. In other words, they're an underdog, and I've always been a... I always root for the underdog, guys. You know what I mean? I've always been an underdog type of feller. You know what I mean? So that's another reason why I'm rooting for this stock. You know what I mean? That's why I own 20 shares of it. You know, I want to continue to dollar cost average in. And I'm going to continue to buy more shares because I think this is a great short-term and long-term play. It says, uh, NMM remains highly undervalued and highly discounted to its peers on the incredible strength in what is now decade high rates in both the container and dry bulk segments. NMM nearly doubled from publication of my 20 December 2020 article to my January 2021 article and has nearly doubled again since the publication of the January article, yet still trades at an absurdly low 1.7x 2022 earnings at the time of writing on my basis case with the uncertainty of the merger behind us and much of 2020 revenue secured. The decade high rates being achieved across its entire fleet will continue to propel NMM's share price on its current trajectory toward our next double. It says Navos Partners reports solid Q4 results as expected with no surprise. It says Navos beat analysts expectation. Where am I at here? It says uh, Navos beat analyst expectation with just released uh, Q4 at uh, $1.12 per share of non GAAP earnings on a better than expected bulk market. Although exceeding expectations are always encouraging, $1.12 per share is nothing compared to what is in the pipeline for for future quarters. Then it gives you a breakdown right here, guys, of all their, you know, their uh, revenue. 
It says the $1.12 per share of earnings reported for Q4 comes from monthly revenues of around $30 million, with most of the container fleet uh, rechartered at much higher rates in Q4 20 and Q1 21, along with the firming dry bulk market monthly revenues will quickly quickly ramp from the $30 million per uh, month level to nearly $50 million per month over the course of 2021. That's almost double, guys, um, monthly, you know what I mean, from 30 to uh 30 to 50. That's just about damn near double. It says, whereas at last report, most of the 2021 revenue had yet to be secured on a fixed rate contract. Now that the vast majority has been secured, removing much of the uncertainty on the 2021 outlook. NMM has already secured fixed rate contracts for 66% of the combined fleet's sailing days in 2021, guaranteeing full year profitability. The remaining revenue from the 34% of the fleet on spot and floating rate contracts will be 100% profit in 2021. If the market rates in the presentation at the time of release are achieved for full year on the remaining 34% of the fleet's days, implied total uh, revenue for 2021 is $589 million, which will yield net income of around $250 million or about $12.08 per share. This is on a stock, guys, that trades at under $24 per share at the time of writing and has already quadrupled from its absurd and unjusted 2020 lows. Since 2022 is now looking to be an even stronger year than 2021. So as time of publication, my last article said immense rates suggest that 2022 container rates would be lower than the 2021 rates at the time of publication. I predicted correctly that the rates would really stay high and could go much higher on extremely tight supply and robust demand. Implied 22 rates and now far higher than 2021 rates were in January 2021. It says, and far high levels that the Navos has already fixed most of the NMCI fleet as of 2021. It says here, I'm going to skip all this here. It says, containerized goods demand pushing even higher while inventory set record lows. <clears throat> it says, in an article published Friday, Frightwaves reports that Thursday, ICM, I'm going to skip all this here, guys. I'm going to skip through a little bit of all this here. It says, uh, I'm going to get to this. It's a surge of container ordering confirms bullet trade outlook. It says, a flurry of ordering in Q1 and Q, Q4 and Q1 has already taken the order book from its all-time lows in Q4. Of around 10% of the global fleet to above 15%, which is encouraging. That is in my thesis about Mega Max capacity being sold out into 2024. That I wrote about in an earlier piece appears to hold true as the order ordering focuses in Q1 shifted to the next largest ships, for which shipping shipbuilding capacity is, is now also more or less sold out for 2023. Wow. And while an order book of of 6.5% for 2023 might sound alarming. It is really not much higher than the reasonable expectations of 4.5 trade growth in 2023, not to mention the massive excess demand hangover coming out of two years of grossly insufficient supply growth. Some softening of rates can certainly be expected later in 23, which will cause many old vessels that have been kept out of trading for two years longer than their normal technical and economic lifelines to be scrapped it is quite reasonable to expect that even 6.5 fleet growth to 2023 rates will settle at a very healthy level. Shipyards were only able to make so much capacity available to the container sector in 23 due to complete absence of ordering by other sectors. With dry bulk rates at decade highs and a quarter of the tanker fleet over 15 years old, I expect a lot more competing for the large ships berths from other shipping sectors come 2024. Guys, to sum all that up. To me, in my opinion, what all that is saying is that, you know what I mean, that the shipping sector is on fire. It's going to continue to go up. And um, I think that's why this is a great company to look into. There's a lot of other uh, shipping container companies as well, guys, but I like this one. Um, and another one is Danos, D-A-N-O-S. I'm throwing that one out there for you guys, right? Go do your research. That is another uh shipping company guys well, actually i made a video on it guys yeah, what am I thinking? but that's another great one it's plugging into 22 dry bulk freight forward agreement ffa contract freight and apply 20 it says dry bulk also set to have a high few blockbuster years it says 2022 container rates to my model i forecast the base case revenues for 2022 at 598 million implying 2022 ets at 13 dollars and 24 cents but many analysts including myself believe that uh Capsized rates are likely to far exceed what is currently priced into dry bulk F A double F A's. And for that reason, I have added a bull case scenario to my model that I believe to be more likely scenario. Joachim 
Hendelsa, who has been ranked by Bloomberg as the number one shipping equities analyst for three years running, uh, who obviously guys knows his shit and knows what he's talking about is what they're basically saying, and who I can attest to have been incredibly precise about shipping markets in recent years. She's uh, capsized rates much higher for the balance of 2021 and through 2022. So obviously, these next couple years, guys, are going to be on fire. You know what I mean? Don't sleep on the shipping sector, guys. If I use the above previous forecaster for the bull uh, case, it implies an additional $70 million of revenue for NMM's Capsized fleet alone versus my FFA base case, exceeding the ex expected strength to encompass the rest of NMM's dry fleet. The 700 million of revenue I use for my bulk case scenario is on the conservative side of what is implied by Cleve's dry bulk rate. The case in 700 million of revenue in 2022 would yield net income of around 360 million or 18 and 44 cents per share. Remember, this is on a stock that trades below $24. Well, it's $28. It's at $28. This article was from a uh, couple of days ago, guys. It says this implies NMM trades at just 1.3 times 2022 earnings on a bull case. If the bull case plays out as expected, NMM would generate uh, in excess of 700 million of cash between 2021 and 2022, compared to uh, total debt and capital lease of 760 million. It says when asked. On the call, what they will be doing with all of that cash, Chairman and CEO and Kilo uh, Frangle made it clear that they will be buying more ships and pay off debt. Smart. I mean, the more ships they got and the less debt they got, that's more profit for them, guys. We see our service as a growth platform that we are in the right part of the cycle, meaning we, we see great upside potential with our fleet, but also would like to also use the excess in deleveraging. All right, it says, I believe the world's growth platforms were deliberately choose to prime investors on what to expect going forward. The, sh the six ship acquisition announced in conjunction of Q4 results represented a nearly 15% growth in the dry bulk fleet and are likely to be just the beginnings. Regarding the de uh, deleveraging comment, I am a bit perplexed that NMs already has a strong balance sheet and extremely low leverage with the scrap value of the fleet covers 90% of debt, which they are made at a point of highlight and they're persistent. All right, guys, I'm not going to keep reading all of this here. I'm just going to go down here into uh, uh, a little bit more. It says uh, rates continue to, to be well supported in 23 and beyond. Both container drug bulk ships order books remain anemic through 2022 ends, and it is now too largely too late to add for 2022 delivery. So, guys, what basically all this is saying here is uh, they're already booked out, man. All these container ships already have contracts and already are booked out throughout 2022 that's crazy uh is already booked for, oh shoot and it says uh, d uh delivery and much of large ship capacity is already booked for 2023 so basically guys the next three years are already booked on the books and already booked guys is what there's is, is saying here in this article where this rates continue to be well uh well supported through 2023 that is freaking bullish as hell uh, for the shipping sectors as many new capsized ships are needed and likely won't arrive i'm not going to read all that for you guys uh, then it says, I'm going to close out. It says, iron ore isn't the only commodity about to ex experience a super cycle. It says, top dry bulk commodities, iron ore won't be the only commodity experiencing significant seaborne trade growth in the coming coming decades. Recent news and analysts in a watch with calls for commodity super cycle, including a recent piece by Nabiska asking the upcoming super cycles is the macro opportunity of a lifetime, guys. The, the article is great read that recommends dry bulk shipping exposure as a very good diversifier. See, guys, obviously, you got to diversify your, your portfolio. Don't just be all in one sector. I learned that when we had this correction, man, for this past couple months, uh, you know, past two months or whatever it was. I got hit hard because I was heavily uh, invested in, in growth and in the EV sector. Right, I wasn't diversified in, in a little bit of this and a little bit of that, such as being in shipping and, and being in financials and being in some growth stocks and then maybe EV, right? You got to have different plays. Don't put all your eggs in one basket, as they say. It says, one thing is for sure, global stimulus and infrastructure spending is hugely bullish for commodity trade and just as incremental iron ore supply is set to come from larger mining operations further a field, the same will be true for incremental supply for the rest of the commodities basket. This is the reason shipping is a leveraged play on the commodity boom. 
every increment until shipped will require more than 1% increment until capacity to ship at an incremental unit must travel farther than the existing average. All right, guys, I'm just going to close out with, uh, it says, uh, still the cheapest, aside from DAC, which I also know, okay, it says, risk to the thesis, it says, uh, winning the lottery in slow motion, I feel like a broken record, but here we are again, market fundamentals and outlook for the container and dry bulk have improved just as fast as the NMM shares price. I will keep pounding the table as long as NMM remains as absurdly cheap as it is. Rates have blown past my prior expectations to levels last seen over a decade ago. I did, however, mention this as a distinct uh, possibility in prior articles, as is the nature of the shipping business. When demand overwhelms, supply rates go to the moon, seemingly overnight. With the long-term structural supply-demand imbalances we saw in the last super cycle leading up to 2008, uh, most shipping stocks went up thousands of percent. Similar structure supply, con wow, uh, supply constraints appear to be f uh, forming up now as demand has s suddenly overwhelmed new ship shipbuilding capacity. It is not out of the question to see similar stock performance in the coming years. Personally, I am still applying more of my money into NMM. Uh, as I remain the cheapest stock I can find, somewhere between 1.3 and 1.7 expected 222 earnings. So, guys, obviously, I, I what all I'm the takeaway from all of this, guys. Sorry if it was long. Is obviously the commodity sector, guys. The shipping sector is very, very bullish, and it's going to be bullish uh, for the next couple of years, guys. And if you don't catch the ship, you're going to be left behind. You know what I mean? And as he said, it can go up thousands, right? As it did in 08. I didn't know it did in 08. I just learned something new right now. But guys, put Navos, ticker NMM, on your radar. Don't sleep on them. Hopefully, you found this video useful, not boring, and too long. If you did, maybe consider to uh, subscribe to the channel and hit that like button. It is free of charge. It costs you nothing, and it helps me out with that YouTube algo. This is Crypto and Stock Talk with Hyman G. Hopefully, you guys have a wonderfully blessed night tonight. Until tomorrow. I will be coming through with another latest and greatest video tomorrow. Stay tuned. Peace.